everyone, on this episode of Coding with Kate, we are going to be talking about detachment! I love detachment. It is a fun root operation in ICD-10 PCS, Procedural Coding System. And to remind you, PCS is only used in inpatient hospital settings. But with detachment, we're basically talking about amputations. I don't know why I find this root operation so much fun, but I do. So today, we are going to be going in depth on how to code detachments. We won't be looking at the book, we'll be talking more about the body systems or body areas that are involved or only available for detachment, how PCS defines different types of detachments with anatomy, because you may skip over it in your courses. Hopefully they'll bring it up and you can go in depth with it because it can be kind of confusing, especially with some of the terms that they talk about, and especially because the body system slash body regions that are involved in detachment are a little bit different than what you were taught in your anatomy courses. So this is why this video is just going to be a lot of talking and a little bit of visual aids, but we won't actually be looking in the book. We'll be breaking down detachment, how it works, how to define it, and then in another video we can actually code detachment, but I will give some examples so then you can understand the different language and how it applies to detachment. It's gonna be so much fun! As far as the body systems go, the ones that are available are more body regions, and there are chapters within the PCS code book that cover those, which are basically body regions that cover overlapping body layers. So detachment would be found in any of those, specifically the upper and the lower extremities. So the upper and lower extremities, you're talking about your arms and your legs. One of the body parts, which will be in your fourth character, is the forequarter. Includes the entire upper limb, which is your arm, the clavicle, and then the scapula, which is on the posterior view, that is your shoulder blade. So this is the entire body part that they are talking about when they say the upper extremity. And then we have hindquarter, that your entire leg, the pelvic girdle, which is one side of the pelvic bone, and then the butt is all in here and that is all included in the lower extremities. Now with those upper and lower extremities they are further defined into upper and lower arm, upper and lower leg. So the lower arm would be your ulna and radius in your hand, the upper arm would then be your humerus. If we're talking about the lower extremities the upper part of the leg would be your femur and then the lower part of your leg would be your tibia and fibia and then your foot. So then the next body region that PCS defines is the knee region, which is your entire lower part of the leg stopping at the knee joint. It doesn't include the entire knee joint, just the tibia and fibia up until that knee joint. And I'll have to look and see if the patella is part of that knee joint or if it just stops at the proximal end of the tibia and fibia. Now when we are specifically talking about the hands and the feet, sometimes healthcare providers and even in PCS they will use the term ray, which is fingers and toes and associated metacarpals and metatarsals. Here we have our hand. A ray is literally the carpals all the way to the metatarsals of each finger. Kind of looks like rays of the sun. Your thumb is your first ray. Index finger is your second ray. Middle finger is your third ray. Ring finger is your fourth ray. And your pinky is your fifth ray. Now if they just say digits, first digit, thumb, second digit, index finger, third digit, middle finger, fourth digit, ring finger, and fifth digit, pinky finger. So this is how we define rays. Also, what you'll find in PCS is in your qualifier or your seventh character placement, they will use the term complete detachment and 
partial detachment. Complete detachment is of the hand or foot or ray of hand or foot. This essentially means, if we're talking about the hand, a complete detachment would be through the carpals, which are all of the odd-shaped bones near your wrist. Complete detachment would be from those carpals and everything else. If we are talking about the feet, we are talking about the tarsals. The detachment would take place at the tarsals, which are all of the odd-shaped bones that are near your ankle. Talking about complete detachment, we're talking about essentially at the wrist or at the ankle. That is where the detachment would take place. Now, with a partial detachment of a ray of the hand or foot. If they use partial detachment of the hand, then we are talking about the detachment taking place anywhere along the shaft of those metacarpal bones. If we're talking about the foot, that would be along the shaft of the metatarsals. So the bones that sprout out of the wrist or the ankle joint. So if we are talking about a high amputation, now essentially when we're talking about a high amputation, it's essentially on the proximal end of any of the bones. So the end of the bone that is closest to this main joint that attaches to the trunk. So that will be the proximal end of the humerus, the proximal end of the ulna and radius, the proximal end of any of those finger bones. That also goes for the proximal end of the femur, and the proximal end of the tibia and fibia, and then the proximal end of any of the foot bones. So that would be considered a high amputation. The next term that you will see in your qualifier or seventh character placement is a mid amputation. We are basically talking about anywhere along the shaft of the humerus, ulna and radius, femur, tibia and fibia, and then also along the middle portion of the shaft of the hand or foot bones. So this would be your mid amputation. And then the next term that you will see in your qualifier or seventh character placement is a low amputation. This is where we are talking about the distal end of the humerus, the ulna and radius, the femur, tibia and fibia, and then also any of the hand or foot bones. So we are talking about the end of the any of these bones that are as far away from the joint closest to the trunk. So here's one example of a term that they use for a specific type of amputation, which is a midfoot or Liz Franck joint amputation. So with this one, we are talking about, and if you do Google this, you will find the anatomical location of this specific type of amputation. It is at the tarso metatarsal joint of the foot. Now, if we remember, the tarsals are the oddly shaped bones that are near the ankle. And then the metatarsals are the longer bones that sprout out of there. So at that tarsal metatarsal joint where they connect like that, so right at this joint, the amputation took place, that would then be considered a complete amputation. Because if you remember when we were talking about complete amputations, they take, take place anywhere along the tarsals. So that is where high amputation could take place. If it was anywhere distally from there, so anywhere along the metatarsals and distally from that, then we would be talking about a partial amputation. But since it clearly said tarsal metatarsal, so at the tarsal and the metatarsal connecting point, that would be considered a complete amputation. Another example that we can use for detachment is if the medical report said they did an amputation at the distal end of the humerus, so the distal end of the humerus, we would say that is a partial detachment because it was not at the proximal end, it was at the distal end of the humerus, but we would also consider that a low amputation because a low amputation is at the distal end of the bone they are cutting off. It is the furthest end part of the bone away from where the limb attaches to the trunk. So the distal end of the humerus would be a low amputation of the upper arm or a partial 
amputation. So that is kind of how we define detachments, amputations within PCS. I think it's a lot of fun to look at skeletal anatomy diagrams and pinpoint where the amputations took place, actually mark a line where it took place, and then start to analyze is that high, mid, low, complete, partial, what joints were involved, etc. It's a lot of fun. And once you get the hang of it, it's really easy. It's when you get into the hands and the feet with the very long <laughs> joint names that they might use. But as long as you have a diagram or a picture of the skeletal anatomy of whatever hand, foot, or extremities you're working with, it's actually really easy to pinpoint and then use the guidelines of a complete and partial amputation and a high, mid, and low amputation. And then it's quite easy to build your code in the tables once you have all that information. So the next video, I will actually take an op report of an amputation so then we can look at a diagram of skeletal anatomy of whichever extremity, hand or foot, and we can start pinpointing what type of amputations it is and actually build our code in the PCS code book. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I will also post links of the previous PCS videos so then you can see about the structure of the PCS code book and then also a previous video where I actually build a code in the code book based off of an op report so you can see how to use the tables and navigate the book. So I will see you all later. Bye!